All right, we're going to go into the book of Revelation, chapter 20 now. Remember in 19, we had this great multitude in heaven, the redeemed, the saved, the chosen. And it was like waterfalls as they gloried and thanked God and sang to him. And we came to the marriage supper of the Lamb, that we, the saints, were brought there. We, the sons of God, become his bride, become his wife. And as we have that marriage supper, the, this is at the end of the, before the end of the tribulation, near the end of the tribulation, because as soon as that's done, we see him, Christ, on this white horse representing God's authority. And then we are with him on white horses representing God's authority. And we return with him, and he slays the nations. He slays those that have come out to resist him, those working with the devil. And he takes the beast, the Antichrist, and the false prophet, and he throws them in the lake of fire. And the rest of these armies, the rest, in verse 21, that will come up to resist him, were slain by the sword in his mouth, by the word of God. And then we go to chapter 20. And I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. So John sees this angel as we've come back with him. He's slain these armies. He's thrown the Antichrist and the false prophet into the lake of fire. And now this angel comes down from heaven and he has the key to the abyss. And John sees this and he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. When we return with him, when Christ comes to rule and reign, it's going to be on earth for a thousand years. So many Christians think they're going to get raptured or die and go sit on a cloud or in heaven somewhere and play harps. You're coming back immediately for war with him, and then you're going to rule and reign with him upon this earth with the people that were left at the end of the tribulation as the earth multiplies again. People multiply upon the earth. We will rule and reign with him for a thousand years. And during that thousand years, Satan is bound. He's bound in the pit. And verse 3, and threw him into the abyss and shut it and sealed it over him so that he should not deceive the nations any longer. So that Satan can't deceive the nations. As Christ is ruling and reigning in us with him, the people have this kingdom of God where he rules in righteousness. And he rules fairly and honestly. All the opposite of what you see in governments now. And in continuing on there, until the thousand years were completed, after these things, he must be released a short time. So we'll be here ruling and reigning with Christ for a thousand years. Satan will be bound. But at the end of the thousand years, he's released out of the pit again. In verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given to them. Who are these? I saw thrones, and they... The, they are the saints. They are us. They are the Christians. Look at what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 2 and 3. Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is judged by you, are you not competent to constitute the smallest law courts? Paul's saying, you're going to judge the world. Can't you take care of the small legal matters of life? Can't you be offended that you can go on in grace and forgive? We're going to judge the world, he's saying. Why are you taking people to court? Why are you suing each other? Why are you suing others? We're not to love this world or the things of the world. We gave this world up. And in verse 3 there, do you not know that we shall judge angels. That's what it says saying here, we're going to judge angels. How much more the matters of this life. So these in verse four are the saints. 
and judgment is given to them. We're to judge in righteousness with him. And going on, and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of the testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God. And those who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark upon their forehead upon or upon their hand. And they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Who are these people? These are any Christians that might have been left on the earth at the midway point of the tribulation after the rapture of the church. And these are the Jews, the Israelis, who turned to him from the work of the two witnesses, saw that their Messiah had come, saw that in the death and resurrection of those two witnesses, they turned to their Messiah, they turned to Christ, and the Antichrist rages against them, and he's slaying them by the millions. He's trying to get every one of them and get rid of them as fast as he can. These are those and they're raised at this time, and they come to life and reign with Christ for that thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. This is the first resurrection. Anybody that died unsaved, those not in the Father's book, those not chosen by the Father, those not in the Lamb's book of life, those do not come back to life. They do not come back to life until the thousand years, till that thousand year period that Christ and us will rule and reign. They don't come to life until after it. Verse six, blessed and holy is the one who is part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. The saints will reign with him for that thousand years. The second death, the death where you're permanently separated from God, that has no power over you. In verse seven, and when the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison. After the thousand years, God releases Satan again and will come out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, those countries, those people that come against Christ, come against his rule, come against his kingdoms, come against the kingdom of God. That is who Gog and Magog are, to gather them together for the war. The number of them is like the sand of the seashore. So we rule and reign with Christ. Life on earth is being ruled in fairness and justice and righteousness. But as soon as Satan is released, the people follow him again. Vast amounts of the people go with him and go with his kingdom that he's trying to set up again in these armies. Given a choice, as in the history of man, they quickly turn back to the flesh, turn back to Satan and follow him, and the end is going to be death and darkness. And in verse 9, And they came upon the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints. This army, these people, these kingdoms that the devil has now gotten to follow him are going to come upon the camp of the saints, come upon us as we rule and reign with him. And they will come upon us at the beloved city. And fire came down from heaven and devoured them. Once again, it's a futile effort. Once again, it's just the end of things quickly and easily as fire falls from heaven and destroys them. And in verse 10, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So you had the Antichrist thrown in to the lake of fire along with the false prophet, and now Satan himself is thrown in there permanently, once and for all, not to be released again. And I saw a great white throne, and him who sat upon it from whose presence earth and heaven fled away and no place was found to them. Now that Satan is bound, these kingdoms are destroyed again. And he is sitting here on the great white throne 
for judgment of the dead, of the ones that died, that rejected him, the ones that never heard of him. Everybody that's name wasn't written in the Father's book of life, everybody not predestined, chosen by the Father, everybody that didn't have their name in that book that he paid that price for, shed his blood for, all those are brought here before this throne. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, the kings, the princes, the janitors, the poor person, the farmer, anybody that didn't know him is brought before his throne. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. So these books are opened. And also the book of life, that one that we saw in chapter four, where the father in chapter five also, where the lamb went and paid the price and took that book from the Father. This is the book of life, and that book is opened. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. Not the book of life, this is our names. Into those the first books, and another book was opened, and books were opened. Those are the things that they are judged by, the things done in their lives, the things done in their time. And God will judge in righteousness and fairness. When you see it, you'll say, that was right. Right now, so many people want to say, oh, well, that person never even got a chance to hear. That was be the gospel never went there. Or this person grew up this way and had a terrible life. It won't matter. He will judge in fairness and in righteousness. And in verse 13, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds. So wherever you died, however you died, wherever you were, they're brought there, the unsaved, and they are judged according to their deeds. We have been forgiven for our deeds. Our sins are as far as the east is from the west. We are chosen. We are forgiven. Salvation is a free gift. That's what I was saying about the Supper of the Lamb. You're given that free gift. Your sins are forgiven. They're as far as the east is from the west. But what do you do with that in your life? You only have this one book to learn. There's one book and one God. But what do you do in your life? What do you do? Do you walk in darkness? Do you love the world and the things of the world? Well, if you come to the end times, he's going to get you prepared for the wedding. But you are forgiven. You found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And that is all that simple. But what do you do with that eternal life he has given you? And verse 14, and death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. So the Antichrist, the beast, Satan, and all those who were not saved, who were not chosen. You got to understand that too, saints. They weren't chosen. The Father didn't choose them. A lot of you don't even understand that. He chooses. The Father chooses. And the Lamb, the Son, doesn't lose any of them. But those were judged by what they did. Some people, I don't know, but some of them may be there separated from God for eternity, and life might not be much different than it was here on earth. It just never changes. It just goes on and on, and they hate it. Well, others like Hitler and these terrible people who have been through the history of the earth will be tormented day and night, and there'll be everything in between. And in verse 15, and if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So here we have everybody that was not chosen, this name is not in there, thrown into the lake of fire. And next we'll see with this thousand years over, Satan bound forever now, what becomes of us? What move, where do we move on from here, saints? Because it's been a great revelation to see that Satan is finally, permanently 
bound 